no, this can't be. I just couldn't believe the harsh reality in front of me. The man I loved was cheating on me and to make it even worse, it was with my sister. And she wasn't just any sister, she was my twin. While I'd always felt like the underdog compared to her, when he proposed, I thought things might be different. But even in marriage, I was still playing second fiddle to her. How was I supposed to deal with this double betrayal? Feeling completely alone, I made my way back to my parents' house. What's going on? My mom questioned. I poured my heart out, anxiously wondering where she'd stand. But her reaction caught me off guard. I'm Lisa, a 29-year-old working for a top financial firm. Throughout school, I was the studious type, more focused on books than boys. Maybe it was because of my fear of getting too attached. And there's a reason for that fear. My twin, Lexi, looks exactly like me. Apart from a tiny mole, we're nearly impossible to tell apart. But personality-wise, we're day and night. I'm more reserved, while Lexi's always been the life of the party. She's never had a shortage of romantic interest, dating back to middle school. My apprehension about dating likely stems from her. I once confided in her about a crush, and while she pretended to be supportive, she swooped in and dated him herself. How could you? You knew how I felt about him. I confronted her, heartbroken. But instead of feeling sorry, she just smirked. Yeah, but I ended up liking him too. Can't help it. Seriously? After knowing how I felt? That's so messed up. Honestly, get over it. He liked me more, that's all. That's all? How could you be so cold? Don't you have anything to say to me? Like what? Apologize? Why would I? I'm with him because of me. You should have made your move before he fell for me. I was speechless. Sure, I had only told Lexi I liked the guy and didn't ask her to help or to keep her distance. As much as I wanted to blame her, part of it was on me. She saw an opportunity and took it. That's all. Even if it felt unfair, it was the truth. Maybe if I had been braver, things would have been different. After that, I guarded my heart, afraid of another heartbreak, especially if Lexi was involved. So I never got too close to anyone, resigning myself to the idea of being single forever. But a couple of years ago, things changed. One night at my regular bar, a guy named Steve approached me. He mentioned he'd seen me there before and had been hoping to chat. I was pretty clueless about dating, but his sincerity shone through, and before I knew it, we were in a relationship. A year later, we got engaged, but in the back of my mind, I couldn't shake the fear. What if he met Lexi and fell for her charms? But all that anxiety was for nothing. He looked me in the eyes and said, Fall for your sister? No chance. It's you I love, Lisa. But everyone always picks her over me. Oh, is that so? Well, maybe she's a tad more outgoing. Right? That's why I worried you'd be drawn to her. I love you for you. Sure, you two might look alike, but you're unique. I chose you, Lisa. Those words melted my heart. I couldn't help but cry and he held me tight. My mom was beyond ecstatic about the wedding. She'd always been my rock, always telling me you're beautiful, especially during my low moments. After my dad's passing and both Lexi and I moving out for work, we hadn't been in touch with her much. So sharing my wedding news was such a joy. The only dark cloud was Lexi. During our visit home, she was a storm of resentment. Maybe she was bitter about me getting married first. While mom and Steve chatted away, Lexi cornered me. Don't think you've won. He'll get bored of you soon. Hurt, I asked. Why the bitterness? He really loves me and... Sure, who'd want you really? Just enjoy it while it lasts. Good luck. As hurtful as she was, a part of me wondered if she had a point. Flash forward, nearly a year into our marriage, and things had changed. The caring Steve had grown distant. He'd been working late and our chats had dwindled, especially as our anniversary loomed. Trying to reconnect, I mentioned. Wouldn't it be nice to have dinner together sometime? But he just shot back. No? When work's crazy? We've just been so distant lately. So I just thought that maybe we could... I'm drowning in work. 
Must be nice to clock out on time. I'm sorry. A little things began to stand out, like how he went from calling me honey to just Lisa, but the biggest blow was yet to come. On my day off, while cleaning the house, Steve's tablet caught my eye, and I saw something unbelievable. No, this can't be. A notification popped up showing a photo of him and Lexi. Panic welled up as I swiped the tablet open. No password. What I found was a slew of messages and pictures, undeniable proof of their affair. I was gutted. Cheated on with my own sister? He had promised. He said he wouldn't fall for her. He said he picked me. But I couldn't just bury this. Maybe if we talked and he was truly sorry, we could find a way back. I steeled myself to confront him that evening. When he finally walked in, he seemed taken aback to find me waiting. You're still up? He muttered, trying to walk past. I blocked his way and blurted. You've been seeing Lexi behind my back, haven't you? What's up with that? Huh? What are you talking about? Come on! I stumbled upon your tablet today. The jig is up. You shouldn't snoop. But since you know, yeah, I've been seeing her. His confession hit me hard, but then he added, For the record, I was with Lexi before you came into the picture. I was stunned. What's that supposed to mean? I was actually dating her first, but she had a bunch of debt. Once I realized you had a stable job, I thought, why not marry you and use the money to help her out? Wait, what? So the cash I've been handing over for household expenses? Yeah, I might have exaggerated a bit and skimmed some off the top. Thanks to you, Lexi got a good chunk of change. I felt like the floor had been pulled out from under me. He'd only used me to pay off Lexi's debt. When we first got hitched, he took charge of our finances. Every time he'd ask, I'd just transfer money to our joint account, clueless that he was funneling it to Lexi. Then he shoved some divorce papers in my face. Now that you're in the loop, I don't need you. I'm going back to Lexi. My heart shattered. What was I going to do? Heartbroken and overwhelmed, I signed the papers and went straight to my childhood home. Answering the doorbell, my mom's face showed a mix of shock and concern. What's going on? She inquired. I poured my heart out, wondering if she'd be on my side. As I shared my story, she just nodded and then, to my shock, said, well, good riddance. Wait, good riddance? Yeah, better off without a guy like that. Mom, he betrayed me with my own sister. And that's why it's good he's out of your life. It's not that simple, I feel so used. She pulled me into a hug and whispered, It'll be okay, I got this. I was drained and didn't push for answers. But two days later, Steve and Lexi, thanks to my mom's summons, walked in. I didn't want to face them, but there I was, staring them down. They shot me smug grins and I wanted to run. Breaking the tense silence, my mom chirped. So, Lexi, you and Steve are tying the knot? Lexi replied, almost gloating. You knew? Yes, he was mine first anyway. We're just a better fit, don't you think? Without missing a beat, my mom responded. Oh, for sure. Two peas in a trashy pod. Lexi looked stunned. Then my mom handed them a paper. A shaky Lexi read. Compensation to Lisa for $90,000? What? That's way too much. Is it? After everything you did? Do you want this to go to court? Court? Mom, that's a bit extreme, don't you think? I'm your daughter. Why would you want to hurt me like this? Hurt you? Think about what you two have done to Lisa. How could you both exploit my trusting daughter like that? Lisa's always played the victim. You've always favored me, right, Mom? As she tried to touch Mom, she swiftly moved away, her eyes sharp with anger. Cut the act. I can't even look at you right now. What are you talking about, Mom? Remember the $90,000 you borrowed from Dad? You signed for it. You didn't forget, did you? I remember borrowing from Dad, but he's gone now. I was taken aback. Lexi had taken a significant amount from our father, and I was in the dark about it. The total had risen to a whopping $90,000.
Was this the debt Steve had mentioned? As the conversation continued, my mom spoke up. You think dad's passing means you're off the hook? I'm his inheritor. That debt's on you to pay to me. I wasn't aware of this. I can't just... Mom interrupted. I'd hoped you'd eventually repay it, but now, I don't even recognize you. You need to settle that debt now. Hold on, Mom. Can't we? You've put it off for too long. Either pay up, or I'll see you in court. You can't be serious. There's no way. Despite her pleas, Mom stood her ground. Steve, who had been listening, interjected. Wait, Lexi, you owe money to your dad too? What's it to you? She snapped. What about all the cash I've been sending you? You've used some of it to pay back, right? Not exactly. You didn't just blow through everything I gave you, did you? It turned out that Lexi had not been using the money I had given to Steve to pay off her debt, but rather for her personal enjoyment. Her debt kept mounting. Steve, now looking worried, turned to me. I didn't realize this about her. Forget about marrying her. Lisa, maybe we can work things out? I was taken aback by his audacity. Gathering my thoughts, I responded sharply. Are you kidding me? I never want anything to do with you again. Just be ready to pay up. Really? I'm trying to make amends here. The decision's mine to make. I won't ever forgive either of you. I'll make sure you both face the consequences. Steve and Lexi looked shaken. They tried to apologize again, but I wasn't having any of it. Fearing legal action, they both signed the documents my mom prepared. Because of this, they each owed me $75,000. Ultimately, I broke ties with them and, to my benefit, ended up with a considerable sum. Steve and Lexi never ended up together and even split up. She was deep in debt and was cut out from any family inheritance. Steve, after all the money he'd given her, was nearly penniless. They're likely to be paying off their dues for quite some time, but I have zero pity for them. They brought it upon themselves. I owe my ability to move forward to my mom's unwavering support. Now I'm living solo in an apartment close to work. My mom often stops by and we enjoy meals out together. I'm forever thankful to her and hope to show her my gratitude in the years to come. My husband, who has been domineering and bossy, suddenly threw soup at me. I was stunned as the hot liquid splashed on me. Huh? What are you doing? What's with the soup? Huh? It's just like usual. The taste of the soup is certainly no different from usual. The ingredients are also prepared exactly as my husband specifies, so it should not taste bad at all. No, I can't eat this soup. I can't believe you're making bad food when I'm the one who's supporting us with my money. It's clear that my husband just wants to find fault. What's wrong with splashing bad soup? If you have a complaint, then leave. Well, with no job, you probably have nowhere to go anyway. I had reached my limit. It's impossible to stay married to a man like this anymore. Wiping the soup off my face with my hand, I took a deep breath and said, Fine. I understand. I'll leave. Afterwards, my husband left the house and resorted to relentlessly making harassing phone calls to me. My name is Avery. I'm a working wife in the third year of our marriage. Before getting married, I used to work at a publishing company. I was in charge of editing mystery novels and worked hard every day as an editor. It was at that time that I met Daniel, who would later become my husband. I worked at a major printing company that was a business partner of ours and we got to know each other through work. After receiving Daniel's persistent advances, we decided to get married in our second year of dating. During his proposal, Daniel said, Avery, if we get married, would you consider quitting your job? Huh? Daniel, why? I can support us with my income alone, and I want my wife to take care of the household. But... Certainly at that time, I was completely exhausted from the demanding job at the publishing company. Still, quitting my job required courage. Seeing me hesitate, Daniel said, Avery, didn't you say you wanted to try writing your own works? How about using this opportunity to do some writing while being a homemaker? Is it okay? I'm happy that I can also pursue my dreams. 
Upon accepting Daniel's proposal, I decided to quit my job at the company and after getting married, I became a full-time homemaker. While managing household tasks, I also dedicated myself to writing in front of my computer. Turning the mystery novels I had dealt with as an editor into actual written books turned out to be much more challenging than I had imagined. However, since it was something I had always wanted to challenge myself with, there was also a sense of enjoyment. I had to express my gratitude to Daniel for allowing me to pursue what I wanted to do. I made sure not to neglect my household duties while being thankful to my husband. But gradually, I began to see some shadows in what had initially been unhappy, married life. Daniel began to constantly find fault with my household chores. One day as usual, I was preparing dinner and waiting for his return when Daniel came home late. Welcome back. You are late today. I greeted him with a smile, not showing any displeasure. However, Daniel frowned as he looked at the dishes arranged on the dining table. Huh? Fish today? Yes, a fresh fish was on sale. Right after I answered, Daniel let out a deep sigh. What's this? I want a meat today. I don't want fish at all. Huh? I was taken aback and Daniel pushed the plate towards me. Leave this for you, Avery, and make me a meat dish. Even if you say that... Come on, isn't it a wife's duty to quickly prepare what her husband wants to eat? With that said, I couldn't respond with anything. In the end, I had to make another dish using the frozen meat that day. Furthermore, Daniel didn't do any household chores. Even when he had a day off and was at home all day, he would play games on his phone, ignoring my busy work. I couldn't stand it any longer and decided to talk to him. Hey, Daniel, if you have some free time, could you help me hang the laundry? Huh? Why me? My husband looked at me with an incredulous expression. Well, today's your day off too, and it seems like you don't have any plans. When I responded like that, Daniel sighed and called me over. <sighs> Listen, I work outside every day, unlike you. But don't you think I deserve a break on my day off? I do household chores every day, and I also write. Upon hearing this, Daniel chuckled dismissively. That's not worth a cent, is it? I'm the one earning, and you're just living off my money, right? Yes. In that case, at least do the household chores perfectly. Don't ever think of making me do them again. I understand. I was frustrated, but as Daniel said, I wasn't the one earning money. I felt a sense of obligation for being a homemaker, so I had no choice but to follow what Daniel said. Was it from around that time? He started saying that he was busy with work and the days he was away from home increased. On weekdays, he often worked overtime and there were also many instances of him working on weekends. Every evening when he returned from work, without fail, he would nitpick and complain about things like, The cleaning here isn't thorough. Or, You're not hanging the laundry properly. Sometimes he even woke me up from sleep just to point out my mistakes. On this day too, I was woken up at 1am. Hey, Avery, wake up. Huh? Wh what In my groggy state, I panicked and Daniel spoke with an irritated tone. The floor cleaning is inadequate. Redo it now. Huh? Right now? I vacuumed the floor earlier this afternoon. It's still dirty. Just get up and clean the floor. This is... Daniel stood with his arms crossed, keeping an eye on me. I ended up cleaning the floor in the middle of the night, even though it wasn't dirty. Well, I'm going to take a bath and sleep. Don't sleep until you're done. Saying this, Daniel passed by me. At that moment, I caught a scent of woman's perfume that I didn't recognize coming from him. I was briefly unsettled, but it didn't seem like the right atmosphere to confront him. It must have been transferred from someone at the office, right? Deciding to think that way, I continued with the late night floor cleaning. During that time, I was rushing to finish household chores and then concentrating on writing in the little time I had. At first, I had thought about writing a full-length novel to submit to a publishing company or enter into a competition. However, given my current lifestyle, it seemed challenging to complete a full-length novel. Therefore, I decided to serialize it on a publishing website. Fortunately, the works I submitted began to gain readers little by little. Seeing the comments from readers was also an encouragement to me. 
In the midst of a day full of household chores and continuing to meet Daniel's high demands, writing and submitting novels was my only respite. During those days, winter arrived and I caught the flu. My fever was nearly 104 degrees Fahrenheit and I couldn't even move. On that day, I couldn't manage even the most basic household chores and I had been lying down since morning. When Daniel returned home late at night and saw me in that condition, he raised his voice once again. Hey, what are you thinking? You can't do any housework at all. I'm sorry. I went to the hospital at noon and they said I have the flu. My fever was so high that I couldn't get up. Even with my feeble response, Daniel clicked his tongue. You're a full time housewife. You can't even do housework properly? You really have a good life, huh? Why are you making excuses? Get up and do the housework already. Daniel pulls my arm and tries to force me to stand, but my body lacks the strength to get up. Please, Daniel, can you go easy on me today? Fine, then sleep in the hallway. I don't want you to infect me if you're sick. Huh? Daniel dragged me, defenseless, out of the bedroom and into the freezing hallway. I attempted to return to the bed, but right in front of me, he closed the bedroom door and even locked it. I could only slump down in the hallway feeling hazy. Why was Daniel doing such terrible things? There must be a reason. Even though I was feverish, I decided to investigate my husband. Later, after I had somewhat recovered, I began secretly researching Daniel. On the surface, I continued to do housework and cater to his demands so that he wouldn't suspect anything. And I spent my savings from when I was single to hire a private investigator. Remarkable facts came to light. I never would have expected that Daniel was doing such a thing. Knowing this, I decided to keep the truth to myself, as I was certain that if this fact came to light, it would shake up my life. While holding on to this secret, I continued to live my life as usual for a while. Meanwhile, Daniel's terrible behavior remained unchanged, and the stress of keeping this secret began to take a toll on me. I was losing weight rapidly, and I even started experiencing chronic stomach aches. At this rate, I would be in a bad state. I needed to do something. During that period of contemplation, I received an email in my inbox. A few days later, I was waiting for Daniel as usual, cooking dinner. I prepared dishes that were Daniel's favorites. I hope he won't complain today. I wished that as I arranged the meal to match Daniel's arrival time. Hey, I'm back. My husband returned home after 10 p.m. Welcome back. Dinner is ready. Huh? Lamb steak tonight? That's great. Daniel seemed strangely cheerful. Because I was forbidden from having dinner until he returned, I started eating as soon as Daniel sat at the table. But the next moment, Daniel suddenly threw soup at me. Showered with hot liquid, I was left dumbfounded. What? What are you doing? What's wrong with this soup? Huh? It's the same as usual. Indeed, the taste of the soup was no different from usual. The ingredients were also prepared exactly as Daniel had it specified, and it certainly wasn't bad. No, this soup is absolutely inedible. Despite the fact that I'm the one supporting you with my money, you go and make terrible food. Are you serious? Daniel was grinning as he looked at me, and it was evident that he just wanted to find fault. Yeah, I'm dead serious. What's wrong with throwing this awful soup at you? If you've got a problem, then get out. Oh, and with no job, you've got nowhere to go, do you? I had reached my limit. I couldn't bear to be with a man like this any longer. Wiping the soup off my face, I took a deep breath and said, All right, I'll leave. At that moment, Daniel was briefly taken aback, but quickly returned to grinning. Huh, you're just pretending to be strong. Well, if you can't leave, then go ahead. I know you'll come crawling back soon enough. I left the table in silence, took a shower, and packed my things. Daniel was already snoring in the bedroom, so I left without saying a word. The next day, while relaxing at my parents' house, I received a call from Daniel. When I ignore it, it persistently calls every few minutes. It's what you'd call harassment calls, you know. But I continued to ignore them. Then three days later, I had had enough of the incessant calls, so I reluctantly decided to answer. 
Hello? Hey, you! Where the hell are you? You just silently disappeared. He yelled loudly, and I responded calmly. I'm at my parents' house, you know. Huh? Are you serious about leaving like that? Cut it out already. You were the one who told me to leave, weren't you? You're taking it seriously. Get back home now and do the housework. Daniel shouted angrily. In response, I sighed and replied, I won't be returning to that house. Huh? After work, I'll be waiting for you at the cafe near your office. Let's talk there. Goodbye. With that, I hung up. If he could at least apologize, that last hope was easily dashed. I won't show him any mercy anymore. Now, shall I proceed? I muttered to myself and sent an email to a certain place. Several hours later, as promised, I waited at the cafe, and an infuriated Daniel appeared. Hey, what do you mean you won't go back? As soon as he sat down, Daniel roughly said such words. I can't be your wife anymore. I answered quietly, and Daniel turned red and was about to speak. Just then, Daniel's phone rang. Are you going to answer it? It might be something urgent. I told him that, and he reluctantly answered the phone with an annoyed expression. Eventually, his face turned paler and paler as the call went on. When the call ended, he opened his eyes wide, turned pale, and covered his mouth. What's wrong? Did you get fired after all? Huh? Daniel suddenly turned to look at me, and I gazed at him directly. You got caught cheating with the president's daughter from one of your business partners, didn't you? That's why you got fired, right? Yes, the fact I had uncovered through a private investigator was indeed this. Daniel was having an affair with the daughter of a business partner's CEO, hiding his marriage. I had obtained photographic evidence of this through a detective. What? How do you know about that? Well, I'm the one who reported that fact to your company, you know. What? I smiled at the shocked Daniel. Meanwhile, he was at a loss for words. You, you, do you even know what you've done? Yes, I'm well aware. By the way, I also reported the details to the president of your business partner. He was quite angry and wanted to hear all the details, so I also gave him the evidence of your affair. What? At that moment, Daniel's phone rang again. When I encouraged him to answer it, he trembled and picked up the phone. From the call, the voice of a young woman could be heard, shouting while crying. It seems that Daniel's affair partner is in a state of panic. Daniel almost couldn't say anything and hung up the phone with a pale face. Poor thing, even the woman who was your affair partner. She was just deceived, after all. You lied to her, saying you were single. You? When did you find out? Daniel asked in a fluster and I answered calmly. It was just about a month ago. At first, I thought I'd keep it to myself. Because you see, if this were to become evident and you were to lose your job, it would mean I couldn't support myself either. Th that's right. You're living on my money. What do you think you're accomplishing by doing this? You'll end up in a dire situation too. With a bright face, Daniel lashed out at me. To him, I calmly responded. Well, if that's the case, don't worry. I have my own income. Huh? I explained to a stunned Daniel. I had been posting mystery novels in between household chores. Moreover, it gained a large number of fans, and as a result, it's being turned into a book. The email that arrived while I was troubled by my husband's affair was the news of its adaptation into a book. Additionally, this was one of the reasons why I chose to get a divorce this time, believing that I could become independent. What? What's that? Then, then you better support me next time. Because of what you did, I might lose my job, you know? At that moment, I splashed the water from the glass onto Daniel. What are you doing? It's cold, isn't it? Be glad it wasn't hot soup. We're getting a divorce. I'll charge you $20,000 for the affair, so pay up, you scumbag. Daniel, while in a panic, pleaded not to get divorced. I shrugged it off and left the cafe without further ado. Later, Daniel and I got divorced. Thanks to the lawyer, the cheating fee was paid immediately and I received my share of the property. Afterward, Daniel got fired from his job. 
He's also facing a lawsuit from his affair partner and has to pay alimony. Because of that, he's burdened with an enormous debt, and now he lives in a rundown apartment. He works like a workhorse day and night. It's all his own doing, so I don't sympathize with him at all. As for me, I moved to a new apartment with the alimony and live comfortably. My novel, which was turned into a book, is doing well, and I'm currently working on the next one. From now on, I want to make an effort every day to fulfill my dreams while taking care of myself. I want a divorce. I've decided to leave you and marry your younger sister, Caitlin. What? What are you mad at me for? Are you jealous because she took me from you? I'm sorry, but you've got to give up. I can't love a plain-looking girl like you anymore. But don't worry, you don't have to leave me completely. I'm going to make you my housekeeper. You'll live with us and do all the housework. I'm giving you the honor by thinking highly of your cooking skills, aren't I? He is insane. My blood was boiling when I saw my husband laughing at me and neglecting my feelings like that. But I smiled back at him and said, That's a good idea. My name is Erin. I am a housewife and I live with my husband, Derek. How long are you going to take to style your hair? You're going to be late for work. I called out to my husband as he prepared himself in front of the bathroom mirror in the morning. Even though it's almost time for him to go to work, he's gazing at himself in the mirror. I look so cool today, as usual. It makes me speechless, but it happens every morning, so I've gotten used to it. My husband is certainly attractive, but he knows that himself, so he's a self-absorbed narcissist. He was very popular before we got married, and he cheated on me a lot. You're my true love. You're my type, you know. I have forgiven him every time he said those nice words to me. I am too kind a person to disrespect a woman who has feelings for me. I even felt sorry for him when he said this in tears. Of course, I was anxious about marrying such a man, but I did not hate him, and above all, I was insecure about my plain looks and wanted to give myself a good image by marrying an attractive husband. Now, whenever my fellow housewives compliment my husband on his appearance, it makes me proud and I realize how lucky I am to have married him. I am good at housework and my husband especially appreciates my cooking skills, so we have a happy marriage. Since our marriage, it seems that the women around my husband disappeared. My mother-in-law, Lisa, whom I had heard rumors about being mean, has not made a target for me so far either. However, my peaceful daily life came to an abrupt end when I discovered something. It was when I was cleaning up my husband's room. What's this? Did he own a tie in this color? Since then, I've been discovering more and more things that I have never seen before. In addition to that, he has recently been working overtime and going on holidays a lot. How suspicious. I had a bad feeling. I decided to take a peek at his phone while my husband was sleeping. There, I saw the message he had received. I could see the traces of intimate exchanges with a woman. Without any hesitation, I requested an infidelity investigation to a private investigator. And a few days later, I learned the cruel truth. Ma'am, please try to stay calm as I tell you this. Your husband is having an affair. I was prepared for this, so it was rather a confirmation and I was able to stay calm. But when I saw the photo that he presented to me, my calmness vanished in an instant. I recognized the woman in the photo with her arms around my husband. The woman with whom he was having an affair was Caitlin, my one and only younger sister. I am three years older than Caitlin. She and I have almost identical looks, but otherwise we are complete opposites. She looks more glam because she has a more flamboyant taste than me. 
Unlike my passive and taciturn personality, she's quite open and very talkative. And because she is the type of person who can handle anything with ease, she looks down on me. However, she hates dull and steady work, so she is incapable of doing household chores. Even though we are such complete opposites, she had a habit of imitating me in everything and wanting what I have since we were children. It was the same in terms of love. When I was in high school, my sister took my boyfriend. When I found out, my sister laughed at me and had the audacity to tell me not taking it personally. My parents had taught me to be more patient with my sister as the older one, so I easily forgave her. Perhaps it was this attitude of mine that made her what she is today. Now she was taking my man, my husband for that matter. I was beyond angry, I was disgusted and despised her. And of course, the same goes for my husband. He told me he liked my face, so he settled with my sister who looks like me. When I thought about it, my feelings for my husband suddenly vanished. A few days later, I called my husband and sister into a cafe. What's up, Erin? What did you want to talk about? My husband was very blunt and wouldn't look at my sister's face. Sis, it's been a long time. My sister smiled at me without a trace of guilt. Oh, nothing has changed since then. I'm horrified, even though she's my own sister. I turned to my husband. You're cheating on me, aren't you? I didn't raise my voice or cry. Instead, I learned that people smile when they are really angry. My husband's face turned pale as he looked at me. Erin, I'm sorry. And then he confessed to having an affair with my sister, just like that. As I was getting ready to shout some words of abuse at him, he said in a strained voice, I want a divorce. I've decided to leave you and marry Caitlin. I couldn't believe what I had heard when he said that he was not only divorcing me, but also marrying my sister. I felt my blood boiling and I wanted to leave as soon as possible. Okay, let's get a divorce. And without hesitation, I filled out the divorce papers that my husband presented to me. Thank you for understanding. So, I want to ask you a favor. I want you to be our housekeeper. What? Housekeeper? I couldn't believe what I had heard again. No way. I hope I misheard him. I'd hate to think that someone who was once my husband would be that insane. I can't just throw you away like that. From now on, I want you to live with us as a housekeeper and do the housework. That way you won't have to leave me. That's a good idea, right? I mean, I've always admired your cooking skills. I was astonished that I hadn't misheard him. I was already stunned that my husband, or rather my ex-husband, still thought I didn't want to leave him, but the idea of making me their housekeeper was a tremendous shock. Though I'm a woman whose only charm is my housekeeping skills, there is a limit to how you can make fun of a person. It makes me feel like a fool for having done all the housework for him. I was furious and out of words. As if to push me further, my sister said, That's right, sis. Come live with us. She was smiling, but there was a nasty glimmer in her eyes. She is looking at me with a proud expression. I felt completely ridiculed, which made me even angrier. Why did I choose such a man? It was because of my own weakness, because I was so weak trying to make my humble self look as good as possible with a good-looking husband by my side. But I am not the kind of person who, despite my quiet nature, would just sit back and let them torture me. In fact, I am the type of person who hates to lose. And when I am beaten, I have to fight back. 
I don't want to be made a fool of forever. Revenge is the word that came to mind. That's right. Let's do more damage than just yelling at them here. Let's get back at them. Double, even triple the damage. As I decided to do so, I tried my best to smile and replied. Well, that's a good idea. Right? I'm glad you understand what I mean. My ex-husband nodded in satisfaction. I'll clean up the house so that you two can start living together right away. You can stay in Caitlyn's apartment for the time being. This proposal I made was, of course, part of the plan to get revenge on both of them. Yeah, okay. That's my housekeeper. You're so thoughtful. Thanks, sis. I scoffed in my heart at the happy couple, unaware that they were being played. You idiots. You see in no time. With no more regrets, I quickly filed the divorce papers and started to clean up the house. But of course, I wasn't cleaning up for my ex-husband and sister. The house that my ex-husband and I have been living in is in my name, so I decided to sell it off without notice. I have to get rid of all the furniture too. The first thing I did was to get rid of the most obstructive things, namely my ex-husband's belongings. My narcissistic ex-husband often enjoyed putting on fashion shows at night, so he has a large collection of clothes and shoes. I threw them all into the garbage bag with hatred without mercy. Oof, I feel so refreshed. As soon as the room was cleaned up, I started to feel better right away. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Coming! I opened the door, and there stood Lisa, my mother-in-law. Hello, Erin. I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd stop by. She was as blunt as ever, true to her reputation of being a mean woman. I'll make you some tea. Please make yourself at home. I respond with a friendly smile. My mother-in-law looks around the house suspiciously. I suppose it's not surprising given the piles of garbage bags. Erin, what on earth are you doing? When she asked me that, I told my mother-in-law the whole story of what had happened with my ex-husband. My mother-in-law listened with an exasperated look on her face, sighing from time to time. I'm sorry, Erin, for raising him to be such a man. No, it's not your fault. It's sad to hear that you've divorced. I was happy when he married a down-to-earth woman like you. I thought it would settle him down, so even though many describe me as mean, I couldn't bring myself to attack you. I didn't expect that. I had no idea that my mother-in-law thought that way about me. Anyways, your sister is an asshole, isn't she? She's so different from you. I can't stop my son and your sister from getting together because they are both adults and made the decision to do so. But I do want to help you get your revenge. When I become her mother-in-law, I will strengthen her out. I'm hurting to have gained an unexpected ally. Thank you very much. And thanks to my mother-in-law's cooperation, we were able to smoothly finish everything from disposing the furniture to selling the house. A few days later, my ex-husband called me when I was already at my parents' house. We're officially married now. Is the house ready? I can't believe he would go to the trouble of telling me that so honestly. He's such an idiot asshole. But I'm glad he's an idiot. That's why he fell for my plan. Congratulations! I've cleaned up the house, so you're welcome to come. You should move in today. I couldn't help but say this in a cheerful voice. Later, I watched from hiding as my ex-husband and sister come happily to the front of the house. I watched them standing dumbfounded in front of the sign that read, Sold, with a smile on my face. What the... Sold? What is this? 
the two of them panicked at this unexpected event. Then I make an appearance, just as planned. You got played. My ex-husband and sister turned to me with a surprised faces. Erin, what's going on? Explain what this is about. You were supposed to live in this house with us as our housekeeper. I replied condescendingly to my distraught ex-husband. You are such an idiot. How can I live such a disgusting life? You want me to be your housekeeper? Don't make fun of me. I don't want to see your faces ever again. Here in this, my ex-husband sighed and said, I see. You got jealous because Caitlin took me away from you. I'm sorry, but you've got to give up. I can't love a plain-looking girl like you anymore. How narcissistic can he be? My body reacted with goosebumps. I don't want you. I'm fine with being plain-looking. That's better than being a fool. I blessed her out, not to be outdone. Then my ex-husband started to shed some tears. How can you be so cruel? My ex-wife betrayed me and left me without a place to live. How pitiful. I have been sympathetic and even smitten by his tears. But now, I'm done with being such a convenient woman. Shut up. You're the one who betrayed me. Don't play the tragic hero. My ex-husband and my sister both flinched at my brazenness. From now on, if you need me, you'll have to go through my lawyer. I said those words and was ready to leave. Then, my ex-husband, in a fit of desperation, knocked down the soul sign and tried to enter the house. I don't believe this. This is my house. So I advised my ex-husband in disgust. That house belongs to someone else now, and it's against the law to enter without permission. Shall I call the police for you? With that, my ex-husband left the house, wincing in frustration. My sister looked at me with the same frustrated look on her face. I turned my back on them both and left, laughing out loud. <laughs> the two of them then moved in with my ex-mother-in-law. I'm hoping that my ex-mother-in-law will give my sister a good thrashing. By the way, my parents disowned my sister, so she can't run to her parents anymore. And my ex-husband apparently decided to quit the company he worked for for a long time. I heard that the company found out that he remarried after having an affair with his ex-wife's sister, and he was looked at with disdain and had no place to stay. He is now spending his day working part-time jobs to pay the huge alimony I have demanded. My sister is the type of person who is lazy and hates to work, but of course I have demanded alimony from her as well, so she will have to do hard labor in the near future. It feels good to see my sister, who has always made fun of me, unhappy. But maybe I should be rather grateful to my sister for taking such a foolish man. I fell for that man because I wanted to look good. That is a point to look back on. From now on, I would like to lead a positive and appropriate life for me without being too vain. <laughs>